Uh, good morning. Welcome to Morning Moments. I am so glad you took the time to see us today at whatever platform you're looking and watching this on today. I have a screenplay writer. His name was given to me by uh, by Dale Green. Uh, we had a great interview with him a few weeks ago. And uh, now he's he's got a fellow screenplay writer, David Hyde, who is an award-winning screenplay writer. He's done the, good, the Last Good King and some other things I'm sure he'll tell you about. But uh, I'm so glad to have uh, David with us. Welcome to Morning Moments. Well, thank you. Great to be here. Uh, tell us, uh, what do you do and why do you do it? What do I, well, as you mentioned, I'm a screenwriter. Um, I've been a creative writer probably my whole life. Um, uh, I've written stage plays, poetry, published poet. Uh, I wrote a uh, newsletter column for a number of years and just kind of all evolved into, uh, I always had a desire for screenwriting. Um, in fact, I started out the very first screenplay I wanted to write was from a a book that my, my I was bored on college on summer break from college my mom gave me a book to read just to keep me busy and it's just one of those books that I read it's like this needs to be a movie uh, so I can say I started writing my first screenplay when I was 18 years old and I finished it when I was 48 so <clears throat> sometimes it takes a while doesn't it yeah yeah <laughs> Well, you know, life came in between, sure. and, you know, you have the day job and, you know, and, and all that. So it started out as a hobby, but uh, it's evolved and, and becoming more and more. Uh, and, and, you know, and to the question of why do I do it? I just love, I love the creativity of it. Uh, and uh, I love the challenge of it. Uh, and, you know, honestly, I see a lot of material out there in the world and in, in the film industry. It's like, we can do better. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear, I've heard people say, "Well, I I've seen some stuff that's out there, and I think I think we should do a lot better." I said, "Well, then go do it. Then if you know if you right. if, if you see it and you think you could do better, then go for it. Why why else would uh, would you it be uh, brought to your attention unless you're you're supposed to do something about it?" Yeah. Exactly. And and whether it's, you know, you're looking at the quality of the production or you're looking at the material that's being produced, you know, there's there's both everybody comes at everything with their own worldview. And, uh, you know, there's there's a market out there for getting the right message out and getting the good message out through media, whatever media choice that is. And and do you lean more on the faith based industry? I do. I do. I, you know, I, and I approached the whole thing. I started out, of course, with the Hollywood stars in the eyes and I was going to get an agent and all this stuff. And, and, you know, just through a number of years of, of prayer and, and, uh, and opening the, going through the doors that God opens. Um, he didn't open those doors. I, I had opportunities. I had a manager in Hollywood for a while and, and uh, you know, the, those just weren't the doors that were opening. So, you know, the message was pretty clear and I, and I don't write typically what you would call a typical faith-based movie. Um, Kendrick Brothers is, you know, they're great movies, but you know, that's, that's uh, uh, I write more crossover. Um, there's a new term out there called faith adjacent, um, written with a Christian world viewpoint. So family friendly, good message, strong morals but written with a story in mind that can reach multiple audiences. I think the important thing is in anything that we do, it doesn't even have to do with writing, is to know what, are we hearing from God what we're supposed to do? Uh, you know, yeah. God knows your heart. It's up to us to hear his voice. And when we hear his voice and say, well, there's a reason I put writing on your heart all those years ago and now i'm resurrecting it and making it available to you is that that passion was there for it's usually connected to your purpose oh, absolutely absolutely yeah, and and it's all in in the right timing if if i had do if i dove into the into the music music industry yeah uh movie industry uh back straight out of college i i know i would have failed I would have crashed and burned or ended up in the wrong place. You know, it wasn't the right time for it. 
And I think that's important for a lot of people to see, because especially you know, folks are you know, going gung ho right out of college and they think this is what God has for them. Sometimes there's a, there's a time, a seasoning time for us to go through things before we're able to, to actually do the purpose that God has for us. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not always, you know, I, I praise, praise God for the people who can see their purpose and, and go straight into it at such a young age. Um, but I had some learning to do. I, I, you know, I graduated with a business degree and I, and I bring that into my, into my screenwriting, having a business background, um, helps me manage this, the business of screenwriting. And, and there, there's a lot to be said for the day by day, day by day, dying, dying to self. And if we're, I've often said, if you're in God, where God wants you today, that'll be preparation for tomorrow. And uh, sometimes it's that struggles that you had 20 years ago that, that right. the purpose comes out today. And it's just amazing when you step back and look at it. It's amazing how God, God uses us. I, I had a very wise pastor say once, and I only heard him the one time, and I only remember this one thing that he said. But he said, when God closes the door, he opens the window. Don't climb out the window. Windows are for looking. Yeah. <laughs> I always remember that. It's like, yeah, yeah okay, he's going to give you a glimpse of what would have happened if you had walked through that door. But that doesn't mean you were supposed to walk through that door. Yeah, absolutely. And he doesn't reveal everything to us. I've often said, if Moses, when he was in that desert and had that burning bush experience, if, if God would have showed Moses everything that was good he was going to go through he would have never left that desert he would have stayed no, right there. run the other way <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so sometimes our, our eyes need to be closed to to what god has because we we can't handle what he has for us in, in store for us yeah yeah very true that's why that day-by-day -day walk is so so important and so many times people get so discouraged and they think well i want it and i want it right now uh but, uh, and I, I just, I just shared this in an interview with somebody else just a, uh, just a few days ago, and I'll say it again, you know, our direction, uh, our, 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 our speed is not near as important as our direction. And uh, right. people go real fast, the wrong direction, and they're not going to go where they should be. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can get very lost very quickly. If you're not paying attention to where you're going yeah and in screenwriting any kind of writing i think any kind of creative venture it it's a you're in it for the long haul it's it's there you hear stories of overnight successes well it's like i'm not sure how overnight those overnight successes were even even those um you know it's it's you know study and and learning and meeting the right people learning from them um you, know, you you you're never done screenplay <clears throat> is, is adapting often somebody else's story a novel to the to this to the screen is that what i is that the yes. way you look at it uh, often a lot of them are original um you you mentioned my my latest one my latest screenplay was the last good king um that was just that one was inspired. I was watching Braveheart and started asking questions. What if this happened? What if this happened instead of that? And Kate, from that, I built the story. Um, and then I turned around and turned the screenplay into a novel uh, in, the, in that case. Um, but then other ones, I just finished a, a, an adaptation where the author reached out to me to uh, adapt her, her book. And then we're going to be marketing it to producers. So it's, I'd say it's probably 50-50. Um, a, a lot of them are adaptations from existing novels, but about half of them out there in the world are, are probably original stories that the screen screenwriter or the movie producer just came up with. And it comes by different ways too. I'm, I'm sure you have a cabinet full of starters. Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> Got a, uh, got a deep file of those. Um, yeah, you, and that's just a matter of, you know, when God gives you the inspiration, wherever you are, you write it down and save it for later and 
see and see where that path goes. So um, I've I've had inspirations from watching other movies. I've had inspirations from just talking to friends. I, I have a drama that's in pre-production right now um, about an old a blind man, and a lot of the story elements in that screenplay came from a friend of mine whose father lost his sight when he was in the six in his sixties. I think he was about sixty four when he when he went completely blind. And just the process he went through and things that happened to him being blind, um, a lot of that made it into that screenplay. <clears throat> and uh, uh, there's also a great collaboration that has to take place in the industry too with screenplay and rewrites. And you, yes. can't, you can't be married to everything that you write, can you? <laughs> no, no, you have to be willing to uh, adapt. Um, you know, you have a great story. The producer is going to want your screenplay because they think you have a great story, but then they're going to have their own vision for it. And, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, is that they can buy your screenplay from you and hire somebody else to write it, or they can keep you on board to write it. And that's going to all depend on how cooperative you are. <laughs> So yeah, you have to have flexibility because the, the producer will have his own vision, the director will have their vision, and then all the actors put their own twist on each character. Yeah. Um, it, it must be satisfying though to see something that started in your head when you actually see it on screen uh, to see the end, end yes. results. Yeah, and, and, and it, it can be very different from where it started. But you look at the end product and see how everybody else contributed, as you say, the collaboration to make it make the end product of what it was. Uh, you know, I have to, uh, the process of movie making. I I often talk about it's all it's really a lot like what our walk with the Lord is. We think we're going to do this, and when right. when we give it up, we realize wow. It, it turned into something much better than I could have ever done myself when I give it up. And I think that surrenders that uh, important part, even in our Christian walk, isn't it? So, so true. You know, we, we have this, this vision that we think is so grand. Well, to God, it may be only that big. He has something even bigger in mind than what we can even imagine. Yeah, yeah. now that you let go of it, now I could do something with it. That's what I think God tells us a lot of times. Right, right. Yeah. Well, uh, David, it's been a, it's been an absolute thrill to be able to to talk with you. Uh, down below in the comment section, depending on what platform you're seeing this interview on, we're going to put down his websites and what he's done, and and you can see his credits and in. in uh, other movies and series and TVs and series and things that he's done and or working on a lot of uh, a lot of projects that's uh, that's that's coming forward in the future. Uh, you could keep an eye on David. You could watch what he's doing. You could read his screenplays, or or you could watch them. But probably more important than that, I, I want you to pray for David. Pray for David that God would continue to let those creative juices flow. And that, that he would see the story and he would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit speaking to him at the right moment, the right time. And uh, we're going to be praying that God would use your talents for him. Thank you for that, Andy. Thank you so much for joining us. So, some of you who are watching this, you're thinking, I know somebody needs to hear this. Please pass that, pass this interview on, uh, pass that on to others. And uh, thank you, David, for showing, uh, show, being with us today. And, and thank you for, for, for watching Morning Moments. And uh, I'm going to encourage you to please, please come back to share some more Morning Moments with us. And God bless you.